Hi, Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here with a quick tutorial on how to use the scopes in the optics collection. So here I'm in Final Cut Pro 10 with my playhead over a video clip. And in the titles browser, I have Ripple Optics selected. I'm going to scroll down to where we have four different types of scopes. I'm going to go ahead and hit the X key to mark a range for this first clip. Then I'm going to select scope A and hit Q to connect it to that range. I'll move the playhead close to the beginning and select the scope. You can see in the inspector here, we've got a bunch of parameters for adjusting the scope. In the viewer, we also have an on-screen control that allows you to change the position. So you can either drag directly on the on-screen control, or you can use the scope position controls in the inspector where you could keyframe it to change position. I'm going to reset that. One thing to be careful about with this particular scope, it has a body, so you don't want to go too high or you'll expose the base. If you do need to move it higher, you can increase the scale of the scope over in the inspector, something like that. Let's reset that. Now normally what you're going to want to do is animate the video to make it look like the person looking through the scope is moving the scope. So let's do that. What we'll do is use the pan video controls. So I'll set a keyframe and I'll also set a starting point, uh, let's say over to the right. And obviously this video needs to be scaled up if this is going to work. So I'll scale it up a little bit. And then we'll move forward in time. And then I'm going to pan the video over to the right. Can't go too far with the current scale and down a little bit. Now, you might also think you'd want to keyframe the scale of the video, but you really don't want to keyframe that because it'll get bigger in the outside and the inside. You really want to be able to zoom in on the scope. So you can do that if you move down a little bit, we have a magnify control for the scope. So let's get a keyframe there just to see how that works and move forward. And then we can increase the magnification inside the scope. Now, if I play that back, the scope moves over and focuses in. Let's go back to the title inspector here, look at a few other the controls. We can choose whether or not to see this body of the scope. You might just want to have the scope without that body. And the body is blurred by default since we're focusing on the animal, but you can choose to have the body be uh, nice and clear in focus or blur it. And we already looked at the scale. You can also place a mat over the entire background so we're only looking at the video through the scope. And you can change the color of that mat if you want. I'm going to turn that mat off. You have controls over the color of all these elements inside the scope. So for example, I'll change the inner ring color to more of a red and the outer ring color maybe to a gray. I'll actually just leave that at black. Then we've got the crosshair colors and the scale color. We already looked at magnify. There's a ground glass effect. And if you've already looked at how to use the binoculars from earlier, it's a similar kind of effect. Then what's kind of neat is you can change the outside brightness. Let's make the outside darker uh, just so it brings our attention really to what's inside the scope. We can also blur the outside, which will really bring our attention more to what's inside the scope. You can blur what's inside the scope to simulate focusing. So for instance, at this point, let's move back a little bit. Let's say we want to focus. I'll uh, crank up the inside blur set a keyframe, let's crank it up even further, set a keyframe, move forward a little more in time, and then drag it back down to zero. And now we have the scope moves, zooms in, and focuses. There's also a blur for the ring itself, and what that's really useful for is if you turn off the whole scope itself, the scope body, you could then choose to blur the ring so that you're focused more on the details instead of the ring itself. I'm going to set that back down. These wriggle parameters allow you to make the scope look like it's a handheld scope, like somebody's holding a rifle and they're moving around a little bit. So if we increase the wriggle, just a little bit goes a long way here. And let's bring the noisiness down a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. I'll play that through. And you can see the scope kind of moves around a little bit as it's trying to find its target. Then just like all the optics, we have options for both night vision and thermal vision. Night vision 
we'll turn that on. If you want night vision in this case, what you'd probably want to do is put the matte back on so that the outside is darker. Or you can bring the outside brightness way down, something like that, so it looks like we're at night. And you can adjust the brightness inside there. Let's make sure we're back in focus here. There we go. Or you could turn on thermal vision instead. It really depends on what your video looks like, and you may need to change the colors here. So those are the basic controls for working with a scope. Let's look at the second scope. i move to the second clip, hit X, scope B, Q. Uh, this scope is very similar. It doesn't have a body, but the elements you control in pretty much the same way. You can pan and scale the video. You can change the scope position to uh, track, track an object. In fact, to do that, let's make the scale of the scope a little smaller, and let's have it follow this guy. So let's go to the beginning and move the scope over here, and I'll set a keyframe for the scope position, move forward in time, move it over, move forward in time, move it over, move forward in time, and move it over. And now if we play that back, the scope follows this guy, Okay, so easy way to do that. We've got a matte, much like the other scope. You can turn on and give it a color. You can colorize all the elements of the scope here. So let's make these crosshairs yellow. Let's make the hash marks red. And then you can choose how thick these hash marks are. We can almost get rid of them there. And then the center ring color, let's make uh, red as well. You can really only see that when it's playing because the on-screen control is kind of in the way. That there's that center ring color while we play, you can see that it's red. Now, this next parameter, end blink center ring, what that means is if it's enabled, the center ring will blink as if you've achieved, you kind of locked on your target. So if we play this through, I'll just hit the slash key. You can see it kind of blinks right at the end there as if it's got its target. You can magnify your target. And in this case, we would need to change the location of our control if we're going to do that. So I'm going to undo that. You can choose to make the outside darker and blur the outside. And you can choose to blur inside in order to focus. It has the same wriggle controls, night vision, and thermal vision that the first scope had. If we turn on thermal vision here, we can see that we can we can see the outline of the man. If we want him to have a warmer color, let's put yellow onto black and black onto yellow. And now we get a little bit more definition. Kind of play with that a little bit. Right about there. So now we really look like we're looking at uh, thermal vision here. If you see some edge detail here showing through, what you can do to get rid of that is pretty easy. Just go and scale up the whole video a little bit and that will adjust the edge detail. And that's the second scope. For the third scope, scope C, we have really quite a bit of the same controls. It's a different design, but you can do the same thing with panning and scaling the video, positioning the scope, adding a matte, changing the colors, magnifying the contents, blurring the outside, blurring the inside or keyframing this to achieve focus, adding wriggle, night vision, and thermal vision. In fact, I'll add night vision here and I'll change the outside brightness to make it very dark. Finally, the fourth one is scope D. And this one's a little bit different because it's animated. In fact, I like this one better on this last clip. I'm going to put it on this last clip. This one's animated by default. It has all the elements rotate. Of course, you can pan and scale the video, change the scope position, change the scale of the scope. Be very large or very small. And of course, you can keyframe that. Add a mat change the color of pretty much all of the elements in here individually.
And this one also has a blend mode that can change the way it interacts with the elements that are on the scope. So you can play with that to see if you find something that looks a little uh, better depending on your video. You can blur what's inside it to achieve focus. You can blur what's outside of it to go out of focus. If you don't want these pieces to move, you can choose to uncheck oscillate and then those outer ticks won't move or you can choose whether the inner ticks move or not. If they do move, you can choose how fast they move and how far they move. And the same with the inner rings. You can turn the oscillation on or off. So if we turn that off and then there's no movement. If we turn it on, we can make them move very quickly or very slowly. Then we have the same wriggle, night vision, and thermal vision options that we had in the previous scopes. And that is how to use the four scopes in the optics collection. Thank you for watching.